Hello, Anum. Did you hear about the new an announcement? Yeah, I don't think it's fair. Why not? The computers were really damaged after the flooding. We need once as soon as possible, and it seems the Institute is not able to do that soon. They need our help. Sure, but I don't think it's our responsibility to pay for the damages. They should have insurance. And besides, most of us have our own laptops anyway. But it's just one dollar. What about the benefit to get more parking lots available for students? I know it's just one dollar, but it's still an added expense. Especially since we're international students who are not allowed to work. Most of us are on a budget. Besides, parking availability isn't a big problem. I always find parking. But if they want to do something about it, perhaps they could put up a towing sign. That should help. Yes, maybe you have a point. And ultimately, maybe they're, they're not going to get enough money anyways. Okay guys, so today we're going to talk about the cough reflect and its different phases as an involuntary response. But first, who can tell me what is a reflect? We talked about it in the last session. Okay, no one? Well, a reflex is an automatic action that your body does in a response to something without you even having to think about it. For example, you don't decide when to sneeze, do you? No, right? Well, sneezing is a reflex as well as coughing. When it comes to coughing, we might distinguish four different phases, the first of which is a part in the afferent pathway, while the last three in the efferent one. Considering our brain or, well, our lungs, and its nerves as a computer, the afferent pathway works receiving the information while the afferent sends the response. In other words, the afferent commands the input and the afferent the output. So, these four phases are first, the receptorial phase in which occurs the stimulation of cough receptors that are activated and send an impulse to the center through the vagus nerve. Second, the inspiratory phase that consists in a wide opening of the glottis by contraction of the cartilage with rapid inhalation. Then, we have the compressive phase that consists in a prompt closure of the glottis following the contraction of the muscles with consequent adduction of the vocal cords. At the same time, there is a strong contraction of the abdominal muscles and other respiratory muscles, resulting in an increased pulmonary pressure. Finally, the final phase, the expiratory phase, in which the vocal cords and epiglottis open suddenly, thereby causing an explosive leakage of air from the lungs to the outside. Then. The exhalation continues, favored by complete relaxation of the diaphragm.
Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about the fascinating topic of sustainable architecture and its important role in modern construction practices. The growing awareness of environmental issues has represented a paradigm in shift in the way we design and build structures. Let's explore the key principles and benefits of sustainable architecture. First, I want to mention that sustainable architecture emphasizes energy efficiency. Buildings are responsible for a significant portion of energy consumption, and sustainable design prioritizes methods of minimize this impact. This involves using renewable energy sources, optimizing insulation, and integrating technologies like solar panels and energy efficient lighting systems. Another crucial aspect is the use of eco-friendly materials. Traditional construction materials often have substantial environmental footprint. Sustainable architecture encourages the utilization of recycled or locally sourced materials, reducing the overall environmental impact of the construction process. This not only conserves resources but also supports local economies. Furthermore, the concept of green spaces within urban environments is integral to sustainable architecture, incorporating vegetation on rooftops, vertical gardens, and communal green areas not only enhances the aesthetic appeal but also contributes to improved air quality, biodiversity, and the overall well-being of the community. In addition to environmental benefits, sustainable architecture promotes long-term cost savings. Energy-efficient designs lead to reduce utility costs over time, and the use of durable, low-maintenance materials decreases the need of frequent repairs and replacement. In conclusion, sustainable architecture is not merely a trend, but a fundamental shift toward responsible and forward-thinking construction practices. By fo focusing on energy efficiency, eco-friendly materials, green spaces, and long-term cost savings, we can create structures that harmonize with the environment and promote a more sustainable future.